mighty, powerful love. Only good in you, love. You are pure, love. Pure like you are perfect, love. No, no evil in you, love. No darkness in you, love. You desire life for us, love. Ooh, mahalo, Lord. Nothing can shake you, Lord. Nothing can shake you, Lord. So we rejoice in you this morning, Lord. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy. Yeah, Lord. Ooh. Praise the Lord. Good morning, family, friends, near, far, oh, on vacation. I'm um, going to go to a quick uh, announcement. Um, basically, we have um, Uncle Manny's service coming up on July 30th, and then in Taupo, and we are really pushing hard to support um, our families and neighbors and associates with our backpack drive. Um, we're looking for monetary donations at this point because we have gone out and, and shop and shop and shop for supplies for our kids. Um, we have Pukamani Elementary, Malama House. Um, we have designated families that we're donating that house to. So, and, and some school supplies. So if you can, you can help out, that would be great. Um, August is going to be a full one. Um, Compassionate items, that's going to come up in August as well. We donated a lot of stuff to Malama House and they're really pleased and blessed because they were just running out. So, yeah, if you guys can support, that would be great. Have a blessed day, family.
love. Okay? Let the Lord embrace you this morning, church. Let him hold you in his arms. Jesus said that no one can snatch you, snatch me, snatch us out of the Father's hands. The Father's hands is powerful, mighty, strong. And the Father's hands is also gentle. Gentle with our hearts. Gentle with our spirit. We so fragile church. We break easy back. But it's the Lord who holds us. It's the Lord who lifts us up. You are great and mighty Lord. You embrace us, Lord, no matter what we've done in our lives, Lord. No matter where we are, Lord. You are the Father, Lord, who runs after your son, who came back, Lord, after he was using up all the money you gave him. The prodigal son, Lord, and when he came back, Lord, you was waiting on the porch, waiting on the night, Lord, looking out, and you saw him coming, and you ran to him, Lord. And you and hug him, Lord. That is who you are. You embrace us, Lord. And welcome us into your presence. Come. That's what the Lord say. Come, church. Our Lord. We're going to pray for the tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, Amen. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord and Savior. First of all, we are so thankful for this day. We are so grateful for this day. And the time you have woken up. But well, we have placed you first, Father. Before, any, <clears throat> before anything else. And I know we are grateful and thankful for that. At this moment, I ask thee, in the name of your son, Jesus, to bless thy tithing, thy offering, from the heart, Father, you give from the heart, because we know you will bless us to bless our church, Pukanas, bless our pastors, board members, our ministries, Father, thank you. And our people that is traveling, bring them home safely, Father. Our people who are home, Father, bless them, do them, bring them back. Only you can do all things, Father. Thank you so much. So I ask you again to bless thy tidings and offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have decided to follow Jesus, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Everybody needs a little jerk. Nothing else is important, only the love. that our heart beats for, that is not you. Let our hearts, Father, beat for you, for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Mahalo, Jesus, for showing us the truth that there is one God he is full of life and light and he is good and that, were, and that we were made to worship him in spirit and in truth not by sight but by faith church live by faith In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Yes, sir.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Our call to worship comes from Hebrews 4.12. Hear the word of the Lord. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hallelujah. We all know that God's word is Jesus. He's always with us. He's living with and within us, changing our lives towards his. He's revealing to us who we were and who he wants us to be. Come. The double-edged sword is God, the master physician. He cuts out evil and brings his goodness that now we may live every day in him as he makes the decisions for us. Let go and let the Lord reshape you. Submit everything to him. Become dependent on him. And as we live life this way, he is always with us. We are always in his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Feeling at home in the presence of you. Here we go.
Praise the Lord. Yeah. So in the, in the, in the Genesis, yeah, 
No matter, like we wasn't there in the beginning though, but you know, probably was silent because now we have no words until God would speak. His words was the first words. And um, the Bible, according to the Bible, the purpose of words was to create life, as we see God creating life, commanding life out of darkness and chaos. That's what words, um, the purpose of words. Whenever those kinds of words, yeah, those kinds of words, words that create life, uh, whenever those words are spoken, only good come from it. Only good can come from words that speak life. And we're going to talk about here that what is life then about? Uh, anything that brings life is good. Words that bring life is good. That's good, God. Uh, so this tells us another thing that we were made in the image of God. Yeah, the Bible says Jesus, or God and Jesus, Holy Spirit, created us, let us create human beings in, the, in our image. And so that means that our words, we need to speak, that we speak truth. Give life and not destroy. Right? If it is to destroy, don't say nothing about it. Let everything come out of our mouth be life. So words are powerful. Yeah, words are powerful to destroy, words are powerful to give life. But words again is meant to only give life. Yeah. That's the purpose. Only give life. With this understanding that words are meant to give life, we should be filled with joy. We should be filled with joy, not sorrow. Yeah, the words of God, right? Everything that was happening, God would speak light. God would speak all these things to be. That wasn't one sorrowful thing, but oh, oh, but look at that, bro. Ah, I said that the stars is shining, bro. Ah, I said that the real, the waters and stuff is like, oh, wait. I said, I, I said, look at that flower. Ah, like, buddy, <laughs> that's not how it was. It was a joyful thing. To see all this life coming out. Oh! And God putting things in order. And so when we hear God's words, and in each and every one of us in our lives, God has spoken to us in some way or another way. To the word, especially. If you like your God, I heard that word. Yeah. And we will get into that more. Yeah. But through our lives, we have a sense that, okay, God is leading me this way. And so that, um, you know, those words are from God. It's meant to give us joy, not sorrow. And later on, we'll go through a passage, we're we'll talking through a passage that um, kind of talks about sorrow, hearing God's word and having sorrow, but having joy as well. We'll get to that later. But God desires to give us life, and that's a joyful thing, and we need to rejoice. We need to rejoice, church. We see this throughout the scriptures. We see that throughout the scriptures, everything God said was to give life to his people, to everyone around us, to give life. Throughout the history of the world, throughout our lives, God's words. And so whenever truth wins, that is God giving us life. So throughout history, you know, the darkness seems to try to overcome light, but God always brings the light shining through the darkness. And that life, and that light is truth, yeah? Yeah, throughout, um, I guess one example is with civil rights and how Martin Luther King Jr. would fight for that. And, you know, now get that in America. That freedom, that uh, for all, that equality, yeah? See, but before that, 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 that unfair oppression, yeah? That slavery, bro, that's not, that's dark. But God would not allow um, all that happened to bring life. And so throughout history, uh, truth, whenever truth wins, God is giving life. Whenever righteousness flows, whenever we see righteousness flowing and overcoming, whenever we see righteousness happening, God is giving life. Bro. Whenever we see hope filling people's hearts, that's God giving life. Whenever wisdom, whenever we see wisdom, right? Understanding how I, so I saw this uh, movie, this kid in Africa, they was living in a drought. Yeah, it was never had water. And so they couldn't have no food. It was chaos, everybody fighting for their own life. But this kid, 
He ended up, he, when he was going to school, see, God gave this kid wisdom. Because this kid would learn how to create one pump and one pulley system. And he would, he would create one uh, windmill that when charge uh, was able to bring the water. Because I guess they had water in the well. But bring the water and plant up and um, water the plants. So out of darkness, out of chaos like that, God would allow to give wisdom to this kid. And good came from it. Life came from it. So, and all of that comes from words. The kid was reading one book. He heard one from his teacher. All these words, God. And all those words came from God. Yeah, those words that bring life came from God. Come from God. So when we hear God's words, we should rejoice. And not lose hope. Because God is bringing life into a situation. And God... We testify, we can all testify, I testify that God, He can speak directly to all our situations. Not, not, no situation that we can ever face in our lives can confuse God. <laughs> God know everything, He know what we'll do in every situation, in any trial that we find ourselves in. Yeah. God is God, He sees all things. And so as we obey God's words, then we find rest. Then we find life for our soul. Where we all can testify when we obey God in some parts of our lives and the good that came from it. Like, oh, right on. Praise the Lord. Mahalo, Lord. And this is the foundation of the relationship between God, our Creator, and us, His creation. God speaks. We obey that's the relationship between our Creator and us. But check this out. God speaks because of love. Right? He speaks because of love. That, I believe that's love. For someone to remain in chaos, oh, that's not love. But for life to come out of them, to break through out of the chaos, out of the burden, out of the darkness, that's love. So God speaks because of love and we obey because of love. And that's a relationship between our God and us. He speak because of love, we obey because of love. We exist because God spoke and commanded our existence. God commanded our existence. He wanted us to be here. He wanted us to be on this earth. Right. And so you and me just waking up in the morning and living that is you obeying the law. You waking up in the morning. Where you gotta wake up. <laughs> no, 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 no say sleeping now for the whole day, God. <laughs> wake up. You obeying the law, man. You obeying it. So rejoice. We need to understand that we were creating the image of God. We need to get it in our hearts and minds. So our very existence was and is to be the image of God, to be like Him. We need to discover that though, right? And that's what we're doing every that's what we're doing every single day when we come to church. When we're walking with the Lord in our lives, is discovering what that means. And we definitely see what that means in the gospels when we read about Jesus. Jesus revealed what who we are. Yeah. Jesus revealed what it means to be the image of God. Jesus showed us. That the image of God is passion and faithful love, unfailing, unconditional love, laying down your life kind of love. Jesus showed us that that is the image of God. And so we need to just be that. We need to be that love. Yeah, so we need to have it in our minds and kind of kind of like tang up, fix up the tangles that we think of this whole image of God, this whole loving my neighbor is not so much only the doing of it. Yeah, that's important, but it's the being. It's understanding that you are. You are love. Yeah. And so everything you say and do come from you are. This is just me. <laughs> you know. 
decisions in His love. So understanding that it's more, it's more than the who, it's about who we are. Um, it's not what we do, it's not what we've done. It's not, that, it's not the things that we have that define us, but it is God who commanded us to do that defines us. So don't listen to anybody, don't listen to the devil, listen to God. He telling us who we are, and that's who we are. Believe Him. And that's where we step out in faith to believe Him. It takes a step of faith to trust what God's saying about me. This should give us joy. Ooh, this should give us joy. Knowing that this is what God commanded me to do. And in the midst of the temptations of the world, the trials we face in this life, that joy, right? The joy of the Lord helps us to maintain that in our lives. Because we go through trials, we go through temptations. The devil trying to make us not believe that who we are is who we are, who God calls us to be. But it's the joy of the Lord that gives us strength to stand and be in the midst of a storm. To be who you meant, who God called you to be. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord means that He is on, nothing can shake the Lord. The Lord sings over His enemies now with victory. All His enemies, full of pride, seeking evil and destruction and injustice over His creation, He's like, Ha! You act, bro. <laughs> Not even close. That joy of the Lord is that He knows He is God. And that He loves us though. And that He invites us to be in Him, to be with Him. He invites us to come to stand around and, and stand behind Him. <laughs> and rejoice. So we were made in the image of God to be the image of God. That is what God's word says. That is what God commanded us to do. So we should be joyful. So now there's two things that, that come from God's words that reveal and draw us closer to Him. The first is the Holy Scriptures, right up. This right up, the Holy Scriptures. That God when in, that God when um instilled in the prophets, in Moses, inspired them by his spirit. Yeah, this right here. God inspired. That we may know Him, that we may know His will for us and our creation. That is why we. That is why we feel inspired when we read this. We feel inspired inside when we read stories in the scriptures about how God chose Abraham, this one man out of all the people of the world, and spoke. Okay, God chose this one guy, and He would speak His words and promises over him. And said, go to a man, I will show you, I will bless you. Yeah, your descendants will, will be more than the stars in the sky. That's words from God speaking over this one man. Out of all the people of the world. We read stories like that. In here. We read how God spoke. And we are inspired. Like, oh, this is God's hope. We feel empowered when we read stories in the scriptures about God speaking through Moses to the Pharaoh of Egypt saying, let my people go. God, that was his words. His words. Moses only would repeat God's words, but God said, let my people go. Let my people go from oppression and slavery. Praise the Lord that our God, he cared about the oppressed and the bondage and he cared for great chains. That's what we read. Yeah, God's speaking these things. God, and in the story of Moses, how he getting Pharaoh's attention, you remember? God's words. Yeah, he telling Moses, tell the Pharaoh this, that. Right, you gotta change your life. I'm gonna turn the river to blood. I want all the livestock and life in this year. I'm gonna send frogs, flies, locusts, nice scale. I'm gonna send all these things to swarm your kingdom. Yeah, that's God's words. And all those things happen. <laughs> So that's another thing. When God speaks, blah, 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 what happened? And we are filled with 
this hope to trust in God, to come to God when we hear the words of Jesus, saying, God so loved the world. This is the words of Jesus Christ, God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is Jesus' words. And he spoke that. See, the Holy Scriptures are filled with God's words that inspires us, encourages us, draws us, challenges us to step on in faith and come to God and trust God. So Holy Scriptures, yeah? The second thing God uses is, or to bring us closer to Him, is creation. <laughs> creation itself, as I mentioned before, in Genesis, God would speak. His words came out. And everything we see came from His words. Everything we see in creation is testifying to God. That's why we are drawn to something greater when we look at one sunset. When we look at one sunrise. When we look at one rainbow, because double rainbow. Jane, I was going to jump her, I was jumping her off. Because she said in Texas, she, I don't know if you saw her post, she would take, had one um, huge rainbow over the airport she was going. And it was full moon. So it's a blessing to see that. Mm -hmm. So that would draw, that draws us to God. Mm -hmm. we, it draws us to something greater than God. Mm -hmm. When we look at one mountain, our mountain, when I drive on South Key Road, I always look left, God. I mean, I, I do glance, God. <laughs> glance, and I see how big our mountain is, God. How I call it, you, God. Especially when you stay driving on that five mile strip, God. But I look and I see how big it is. And that inspires me, God. Even when we watch, we, we bless the live here. When we watch the waves crashing, hearing the waves crashing against the reef. When we put on our goggles, swim in the ocean, we see all the, all the sea light, God. All these things draw us to something greater. Inspires to something greater, inspires to God. Brings us to Him. So two things, the Holy Scriptures, God uses to bring us to Himself. To be inspired to come to Him. And even when we look up into the sunset and the stars and the moon, the things God created, and when we look at each other, genuinely, not with genuinely, God like, <laughs> God is good, man. The work that the Holy Spirit did in our lives is cleaning us, cleansing us, purifying us, making us like Jesus, so that when we look at each other, God's creation made in His image, we would be in awe and not in jealousy, anger, grudge, all this kind. All these things blind us from seeing God's creation, you and me. That's a blessing to be able to have eyes like that. To look at people and be, oh, wow, Lord, for so and so. So may the Lord change our hearts so that we may have eyes of Him. But those two things is what draws closer to Him. The Holy Scriptures and creation. This morning, I'll explain more time in understanding this right now. And I, hope, I pray that God inspires us to get in here more. To read and be inspired and be hungry, like, oh, what? Get all this in here. Oh, praise the Lord, let's go. And I'm going to read the story of Nehemiah. So you can turn your Bibles, if you get your Bibles. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, from verse 1 to 12. And um, just we will go through and just understand a little bit more why, what the purpose of the Holy Scriptures is for. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. So Nehemiah, he was a Jewish servant to King Artaxerxes. Yeah, so just a little bit back start. Um, uh, Nehemiah was a Jewish servant to the King Artaxerxes of Persia. Um, and he came from Persia to Jerusalem under the king's authority to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. So the wall in Jerusalem was all boss. And all this happened. Yeah, the king gave him authority. Yeah, the king of Persia. The king of Persia, his interest is in Persia. Not in Jerusalem, but the king himself gave Nehemiah authority. But all that authority came from God. 
God's favor over Nehemiah. Nehemiah's desire was to rebuild the wall. And God gave him favor. And so Nehemiah came to Jerusalem and he began to orchestrate and administrate, gather all the people of God for the building of the wall. Um, and when you read before chapter 8, they had sometimes they had to fight. <laughs> they had to take turns or oh, building the wall, and you guys had to stand ready with the sword. Because that because had enemies that was jealous of all this happening. So fast forward, they ended up building the wall. And that's what we said, chapter 8. So here we go. Starting from verse 1. In October, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square just inside the water gate. Their unified purpose was this. They asked Ezra, the scribe, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given for Israel to obey. So their unified purpose was to hear the law of Moses that God gave the people. So on October, verse 2, on October 8, Ezra the priest brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included the men and women and all the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. To his right stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maaseiah. To his left stood Pediah, Mashiach, Malkijah, Hashum, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. Ezra stood on the platform in full view of all the people. When they saw him open the book of the law, they all rose to their feet. Then Ezra praised the Lord. The great God and all the people chanted, Amen, 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 as they lifted their hands. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Then the Levites, verse 7, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Aku, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Masiah, Kedita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peliah, then instructed the people in the law while everyone remained in Faces. So these Levites, they read the law, but they instructed what the law was saying. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people to understand the passage. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, don't weep or mourn on such a day as this. For today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the Lord. They was weeping. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with feasts and rich food and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Verse 11, and the Levites too quieted the people telling them, hush, don't weep, for this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy because they heard God's words and understood them. Praise the Lord. Man. So they heard the law and there was a weeping. So Ezra brought the book of the law, the law of God, and the law of God, right? Because so the law, you know, there's three ways of seeing the law of God, right? The law of God, the law of Moses, right? It's all the old. Some people say it's the whole Old Testament. Yeah, but this was before. Ne so Nehemiah, even though it's like right after what is that? After Kings and stuff, Nehemiah actually the timeline is later on. This was like Nehemiah was around Malachi and Ezra. So that was closer to Jesus. So, you know, but just the order of the of how the books were here when they, when they made the Bible. 
we put it in that word. Um, but the law of God here in this passage is talking about the law that God gave them in Exodus, Deuteronomy. When we read Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, yeah, the laws that God is speaking to them, that's the law that they're reading. Um, in these books, God, all the laws, regulations, decrees, commandments God gave Moses. Um, and around this time, it's around a thousand years before or after Moses. So Ezra, he broke up the book of the law of God with all his regulations, decrees, commandments. And he read it from morning to afternoon. Oh, wow. Morning to afternoon. That's awesome. But what's also awesome is that people who was there, they was listening to God for that long. But something was in them to want to know this. So they stayed all the way through. Uh, then later on in the passage, we see the Levite stood up to explain. So there wasn't only reading the law. It was explaining. And that's important, right? Because... To understand what is going on. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, so they took the time to explain what the law was saying. Um, but the thing I want to point out is that when Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah and the Levites and Ezra began telling the people to be quiet and stop mourning, right? And stop being sorrowful. The people, when they heard the law, they was mourning them. Now, Nehemiah, when they were telling the people to stop mourning, does that mean that it was wrong for the people of God to mourn as they heard the law of God? Why would they, why were they mourning then? Does God's word cause us to mourn? Maybe they mourn because of sin in their lives. And if that's the reason, which I think that is, then that's not God's word that's making them mourn, but the will to change and brokenness that is making God's words, not only can know. But this morning, is that a bad thing? No. And I will get into that later. Is that a bad thing that they mourn? No. But as I said earlier, God's words are meant to give us life. So, before I move on, and I just caught this now, because the people of God, when they read the law of God, it says in the scripture right here, right? When they read the law of God, they what was weeping. But later on, in verse 11, or in verse, yeah, in verse 12, it says, then they went and celebrated with great joy because they heard God's words. So the people of, the people understood, see, the people understood later on that the law that they were reading, these came from God. Yeah, that the law, not just, it wasn't just laws, but hey, this is the law, follow this law of God. No, this was God's words. And this, this was God's words. And so, you cannot look at them as how you're looking at them. That's why you stay crying. Because you're looking at all these to-do lists back, and you're seeing that you cannot go. But that is not the purpose of that. That wasn't the purpose of it. The purpose was to see God, to see how much God loved them. Yeah. I had to kind of catch down. That's interesting. Two different styles, two different kinds. Um, so God's words are meant to give life. And life is found in what is good. But good is found in what is true. And what is true is what God has spoken. The things that God spoke is true. The law revealed to the people of Israel the truth of what it looks like to live together as the people of God. So when we read all the laws in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, all those things, was God giving them these laws for his people to live by as they live in this world? As they live in this world at that time, according at that time where they live the things, the, the traditions and the things that they're doing now, that's, that, that's what a lot of nations was doing. And so in the midst of the people of God, surrounded by all these nations, God showed them and guided them how to live. This is how I want you to live as my people in Israel. 
in the midst of all these nations around the world. Of what God deems good for them in their context. Yeah. Because the people of God, check this out, the people of God, they wasn't the only one sacrificing that. All the nations were sacrificing. But in the people of God, God gave them, God told them for sacrifice too. But not the way that other nations do. Yeah. Sacrifice of praise, sacrifice. Yeah, let this go. Represent taking your sin. Yeah. The sacrificial lamb. You're not, you're not giving unto any God but me. But this, this I give you because I like your relationship with me. So the things that God was commanding him to do was for them to live by as they live in that area surrounded by the Romans and the kings. And the law was like a mirror. Yeah, it was like a mirror showing the people, right, that they cannot they fell short. When they saw the law, they, that's why they was weeping. Because they saw the law and they just, like I said earlier, they just, I cannot do this, bro. I cannot obey this. It's just hard. And so they mourn. I, I, I can understand why they mourn. But Nehemiah, Ezra, and the Levites, they read it different. They saw God's law different. Yeah, the walls of Jerusalem was built the people of Israel began to be settled in their land again. The land God promised them. And now they have the law of God being read. And heard by all God's people. It wasn't one day for mourning. It was an awesome day. A joyful day. Not a day of mourning. Their city was just rebuilt. <laughs> now the people can rebuild their relationship with God. Which is more important, I would say. They're, now they can reveal their relationship with God by following His words. And Nehemiah said, Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is His strength. So Nehemiah, see, he, he saw the truth, bro. Hey, you guys, don't be sad because the Lord, who will help you and give you favor to reveal this city with His strength and power. He is the same God who is with you as you hear my word and obey. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah? So that's what Nehemiah then was tripping out. Nehemiah the Levites Israel, they saw how great and mighty their God was for them in protecting them and letting them build the wall. So they knew that he is the same God who would be When someone passes away, we mourn when life gets hard and heavy, when we're tired and hurting, full of burdens, we mourn when we feel broken inside because we've done something wrong uh, to someone or to God. There's a time for mourning. But mourning cannot be forever. Jesus himself said, blessed are those who mourn, right? For they shall be comforted. Or blessed are those who mourn. Uh, so Jesus acknowledged mourning. And then he said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. So to Jesus, mourning is not wrong. But mourning is not forever. Because he is the comforter who has come. He is the comforter who has come to comfort us. So when he comforts you, why are you going to mourn about? He comforting you. Yeah. But that's what Jesus said. And how are we comforted by God? Through his words. Because in the beginning in Genesis, there was chaos, man. Chaos, darkness, confusion. And God spoke that he would calm everything. It 
was a beautiful moment when everything came to be, but everything was at peace. Everything in the beginning was at peace, man. No evil, no hatred, no anger, no violence. It was peace, was relationship, was love, intimacy with God. All things. And so God, how he comforts us by his words. When God speaks the very thing we need to hear at just the right time. At just the right time, God knows what we need to hear. We are filled with joy to stand up again and overcome whatever situations we are in. God is so good. He is active in our lives. Speaking to us. At just the right time, I praise the Lord. Look at Paul. Paul said, for a long time, I had a thorn on my side, and I pleaded to God to give, to take away this thorn. And in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of his trial, God spoke to Paul. God spoke these words and said, my strength, Paul, is made perfect in your weakness, Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. In the midst of the trials that Paul was facing, God spoke. And those words brought comfort to Paul. I remember, I remember when I was uh, when I first was coming to Kupanas, and then I graduate, I became a leader at a church camp. I still was confused. Uh, I was a leader of the church camp, still lost, bro. But then one day, one night, you know, I stayed resting inside. Oh, I need help, bro. I gotta get over this. Oh, I don't feel your presence. I don't feel you. So when I don't feel you, I say tripping up. Then I freak out. I don't know what to do. And then God, uh, we say cruising, ready for you on pool day, pool night. And I heard this. I just heard this in my heart. Or I thought this. Yeah. Holy, it's not about feeling holy. It's about faith. That's what God spoke to me in my time of need. I needed him. He spoke that to me. Oh, it's not about feeling. It's, it's about faith. And that's exactly what I needed because I was living by faith. Every time I never feel God, I would be confused and lost. But God told me, Oh, don't, don't rely on that. All you need is faith. And so I was like, Okay, that would, that would spur me on to something. I was like, Yeah. And in my heart, I was like, Yeah, well, how do I get faith? <laughs> how do I get faith, Lord? God is so good. A couple of days later, I said, reading the word. I come to the verse that it says, Romans chapter 8, I think, or 8 or 7, verse 15, sorry. <laughs> but the word says, um, faith comes from hearing the good news of Jesus. Whoa! God, he led, he led me to his words for my time of need. And that changed my life. I was like, okay, I'm going to believe his word. Okay. I struggled with like, okay, God, not with me if I'm not feeling. But then I went back to Jesus' word. Jesus said, I will be with you always. I will be with you always. And so I told myself that, okay, God, this is what you said. So that means I'm going to have faith in. So I said, God will be with me always. Boom. I just have faith. And I just went. I have joy in me. This joy in me. This this confidence, like, okay, boom. Let's go. Because all this time I was waiting for this feeling and stuff, but no. So I just say that and that's how that's how I live that. I try to hear the words of God. God said this, boom. That's what he said. But I was, but huh, I thank God. I thank God for that. He meets us in our time of need, when we are mourning, when we need help, God comes. And check this out, you know, when we mourn, uh, we mourn, because sometimes we have far time seeing that the impossible, maybe most times, we have far time seeing that impossible is possible. Bro, this is impossible. We mourn because we only see the impossible. That's the devil, that's what he likes, he likes us focus on the impossible, that it's not possible. When we hear God's commands, 
we sometimes are discouraged and we grieve inside our souls because we have doubts in our minds that these words of God will actually help me. We have doubts in our minds that God, you said this, but I'm going to believe that this will help me in my life. For example, God commanded us this, forgive one another. That's Jesus' own words. Forgive one another with all your heart as I have forgiven you. That's Jesus' words. But we have our time. And we see how we are blinded, thinking that it's impossible. It's impossible to forgive this guy. I can't give him every time. I see this person. It's impossible. And we withhold forgiveness. And when we withhold forgiveness, we find ourselves struggling deeper and deeper within our souls. And we grieve inside. We don't know the joy of salvation in Jesus. We grieve inside. Because we withhold forgiveness. And our Lord told us to. His word is life, church. His word is life. His word is meant to give us life. But when we withhold forgiveness, we miss out on the freedom. That forgiveness gives us. That is the purpose of God's words. To give us freedom. So when we forgive, there is we find freedom. Freedom from rage. Freedom from anger. All these things lead to oppression. Freedom from bitterness. All these things crumble the bones. Make your bones brittle. Make your heart sink and drop. Paralyze you. And so you cry and you weep and mourn for relief. For relief. God, I need help. But check this out. While, you, while we mourn, while we crying for relief, even though we heard God's words of forgiveness or whatever God is speaking to us, so what is what is standing out to us when we read the word? What is standing out to us when we hear the word being spoken in our sermon? What is God speaking to us? Whatever that is, those words will never leave. When God, when Jesus said, "Forgive others with all your heart as I've forgiven you," that will never disappear. So we cry for relief. God, help me, help me. And God is like, "I give you my word. This word will never disappear." This word will always be right here. But we must remember and fix our minds that this word is not meant to harm me. This word of God is meant to give me life and life abundantly. God's word is meant to give me life and help me. And when we change the way we think, and understand what God's words are meant for, we step out of faith and obey His words. And then we find freedom. Okay, Lord, I will with all my heart. Because I, I want to obey you. And there you will find freedom and joy. And it's on the name of the whole house. Here go again. I had a hard time. Boom, stand up again. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Giving you strength to stand up on the again because hey, here comes this person, but I, 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 I can get mad right now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Church, we need to tell, remind ourselves and tell us that. Tell yourself that. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And obey and go. So Jesus, he knows what we need at just the right time, church. His words awaken us like a prisoner being awakened to the sound of get up and free. Jesus, who never leaves us, speaks to us the very thing we need to hear. And when we simply go there, we are filled with life and inspiration and energy, and we stand up again and overcome the impossible. Whatever the Lord speaks, he empowers. And so this, so we get and we find what God's word, what God is saying in the word. Yeah. And God, God is so good, man. His Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
His Holy Spirit live in us. Just read that. And God will lead you to the exact thing He like to know. And come church, because God will speak to you exactly what you need to know. God never God not like us, He never called us to uh, try and understand everything us. Maybe that's some calling you here for being a scholar and learn and study this. And God let us study. But He knows what we need at this the right time. Through His Word. Found in Him. This, the words of God that we're reading here remind us that the that to God everything is possible. That the impossible is always possible because of God. This life, this road, this narrow road of Jesus, only if you find him. This narrow road of Jesus, hot. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And nothing is impossible with God. Right? The camel, how can a camel fit through the eye of a needle? That's impossible. Not with God. So whatever God, as you read the word, as you're hearing these words this morning, what is God speaking to you in your life? Whatever it is, know that God is speaking that because he wants to give you life. His words, he's speaking to you not to harm you, not to destroy you, but to lift you up, give you freedom, give you peace, give you joy in him. What is he speaking to you in your life? Remember that whatever God is speaking, whatever words is God is speaking to you, is meant to give you life, give everyone around you life, bring you closer to Him. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is meant to bring us closer to Him. So what is the Lord saying to you in your life right now? Let us pray. Wherever you stay in your life, just know that God knows. Just trust in him. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much. Oh, the worship team can come back up too. You can even want some. Father, mahalo, Father, for your love. Mahalo for your presence in our life. Mahalo for your words that give us life. You spoke all things to be. Everything that comes out of your mouth is good. You are good. You desire only life and life abundantly for us, Father. Your life, Father, swallows up sin and death, swallows up fear, swallows up doubt, swallows up anger and bitterness and rage, Lord. Your life swallows up all those things, swallows up death, Lord. All these things of the darkness and evil, Lord, is can't be forever, Lord. Fades away, but your love, your light, is forever. Your life is eternal, God. Father, you know what is going on in all of our lives. I pray, Father, that you would that you would give us ears to hear. Father, I pray that you would give us humbleness, Father. I, Father, I pray that you would change the way we think, Father. Help us to understand that you speak because you want to give us life. And help us to open our hearts to surrender and to trust your words. Help us to read your word, Lord, in your scriptures, Lord. And help us to every person here, Father. Bless your people. Inspire your people. Lift your people. Comfort your people. Strengthen your people, Lord. Your joy is our strength. We rejoice in you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
We're going to sing one more song. One more song. Thank you, Pastor Hall. I just wanted to, uh, you know, thank God for the word. And I don't know if you folks remember, but call to worship, power, but the power you mentioned about, I think it was Hebrew. Hebrews 412. And it was also. The word the same Because thing. the Spirit allows the word. It was about the God's word. When Pastor Hall was saying. And when Pastor was. Pastor Holy was sharing about his life when he first started to, um, you know, learn about God. And he said he was questioning God. Remember, he was he was just saying that he was confused and all that. And then God spoke to him. Yeah, me. So it was in Romans five. Well, beside the word, well, you know, I, I, I had to look it up. Five, 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 five. What are we talking about? Romans 5. Just open. Wanted to read it? Round them up. Round them up. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, a power is called to worship. And Romans 5. But hey, there's a lot of books and verses that talks about faith. So, it's all about reading the word. See how powerful. All right. Thank you. All right. Let us stand up, church. Thank you. 
Grace and Peace Church. Woo! Yeah. Yesterday. Day. Day. Wonderful day. Wonderful day.